how to combine particle systems with other HTML elements on the website and make them interact together. Let's draw particles that fall down across the screen and bounce when they hit a predefined HTML element. Check out the video description for a link to part 1 or to the full particle systems masterclass playlist. Today I will finish this project by showing you how to make it fully responsive, how to make it work even when canvas doesn't cover the full browser window and then we will play with the code and experiment with different visuals. Have fun! When I resized the browser window, the collision area is no longer correctly covering the HTML element. I have to copy line 72, where we use the get bounding client rectangle method to measure element size and position, and I have to call it again from inside our custom resize event to get its new X and Y position after the window changes size. Now, when I make the browser window larger, the collision box always correctly covers the element. That was easy. On line 52, we can change the power of the bounce. Let's say I want particles to only have half the energy after they bounce. You can see that sometimes particles kinda stick to the element, they are not bouncing correctly. It's because they get stuck inside it. Remember how I had to offset x and y position of rectangles to correctly place them over circular particles? I am offsetting x like that here and here and I forgot to also offset Y here and here. Because when it comes to collision in this project, we care about the rectangular hitboxes that travel with particles. We don't really care about the circular particles themselves. Now that we fixed the formula, I will create a hard stop to make sure particles can't fall too far from the element, making them stuck. Let's see. That's better. Particles slowly lose bouncing energy because of the code we wrote here, so what if I want them to bounce a specific number of times and if by that time they still haven't fallen off the edges on either side, I will allow them to fall through the element so they can reset and continue the cycle. I create a property called bounced and I set it to zero. I let them bounce two times and then I will allow them to fall through by including this check in the collision formula. Every time they bounce, I increase bounced by one and when they reset, bounced has to be reset back to zero. You can change the number here to allow them to bounce more times before allowing them to ignore the collision area and continue on their way. I resize my text and I reload my project to measure the element again. I don't like how a lot of particles sit for too long in this area barely moving. I can give particles more horizontal motion by setting Vx to a random value between minus 1 and plus 1. Every time they bounce, I will increase their vertical movement by 50%, further pushing them to one side, increasing the chance they will fall off the edge. Colliding with the text now gives them horizontal movement boost. It's just one of the options we can do. I will let you to decide what looks better. Since we are manipulating Vx, we need to make sure it always resets back to its original default value. So I copy this line and I paste it here inside particle reset method. Otherwise, these increases from line 57 would persist between particle resets. Okay, that's one thing we can do. Keep in mind that all this will run math.random quite often in our code and running math.random too much will affect performance. Another movement option would be this. I delete this line. I really like when they create kind of a sideways stream. Let me show you what I mean. I set the initial X position to the left edge of the element. I want them to start falling from here. When I use this.effect.element.x here, I get a console error. It's important to understand why we are getting this error. It will help you with debugging not only for this project, but for many other object-oriented code bases. It's all about the sequence in which all our code is being executed and when the particles are being created. I'm using my particle class to create 300 particle objects here on line 75, and only after that I'm creating the element. That's why at this point, when I'm triggering particle class constructor, Reference to this dot element doesn't exist yet in our code. This line hasn't been executed yet. I cut all this code and I put it after. 
I created the element and now they finally start coming from the correct position. I set Vx to a random value between 0 and minus 2 to make them move to the left. And I want the initial x position to be the right edge of the element here, so element's x position plus its width. Nice, maybe even a bit further to the right, so width times 1.5. I copy this line of code and I need to make sure I use the same code inside particle reset method. This is pretty nice. If you are getting FPS spikes and performance issues, you can reduce the number of particles. We are doing quite a lot of calculations per second here with collisions and lines between particles that have dynamic opacity. There is actually a lot happening here. Well done if you are a beginner and you managed to build this with me. I copy Vx and I put it inside the reset method again. We will need it for later. So this is what we have so far. It's fully responsive and we understand the code well enough to tweak it and to control the particles to make them fall in any direction and from any point we want. Let's play with the drawing code now. This is a really cool trick you can use for any animated canvas effect. What is an easy way to give particles trails? We are deleting canvas paint between every animation frame. What if I disable that code on line 165 and instead I will draw a semi-transparent rectangle over my canvas, not completely deleting the old paint, just covering it slowly step by step by a barely visible rectangle. This will only work for effects when you don't need canvas to have transparent background. I set fill style to 0, 0, 0 black with 0.2 opacity. This will disable our gradient fill, so up here. Hmm. This needs to be let instead of const. Gradient will be from white to magenta to pink, for example. Then I copy all this, but without let keyword. I want to reassign to the same variable, not to redeclare it like we are doing now. And I paste that here. Notice there is no const or let on line 151. I'm reassigning here. And I need to set fill style somewhere, ideally here inside handle particles, so we do it once for all 300 particles rather than declaring fill style for each particle individually inside their associated draw method. If I was to be thorough here, that gradient code maybe would be better sat on my main effect object. Technically, I am now pulling a global variable gradient from outside my class. It's always better to keep our classes as self-contained as possible. Particles have trails and I can make the trails shorter or longer by adjusting the opacity here on line 167. Now everything on canvas is kind of smudged. We see old paint disappear very slowly, step by step, creating this cool effect. What if you want particles to leave trails like this but the lines connecting them to be sharp. We could do that by drawing particles on one canvas element and the lines on another canvas with different clear settings. It's a very common thing to do. You can try it or keep following the series. One of the effects I will show you will use multiple canvas elements to do something very cool. Max distance property should actually sit on the effect class. I cut it and I paste it here. That's better. The effect will work when you resize the browser window. The problem is that it will only work if canvas is full screen, if canvas is the same size as the browser window. What if I want to make it even better and make it work for any canvas size? I set canvas width to 700 and canvas height to 800. Maybe 600 times 800? Make sure you are not setting canvas size with CSS, because that would be setting only the element size. If you set canvas using these two declarations, you are setting both canvas element size and drawing surface size at the same time, which is what we need to do here. I center canvas in the middle of the web page with CSS like this. Particles won't even come at all. I can make them start falling by setting X to the middle of the page, like this. I can also make them fall to both sides by adjusting Vx value. If I press D on my keyboard to enable or disable debug mode, I can see that the collision area of the text is now off. It is misplaced exactly by the edge between canvas and the web page here and here. That's a problem and it breaks the entire effect. I can fix that by using the same techniques we already learned. 
Same as I'm measuring the element to get its x, y width and height using get bounding client rectangle method, I will also measure canvas. This dot canvas size is this dot canvas from line 70, which already references the canvas element from before, and we measure it by calling get bounding client rectangle on it again. If I open the console, I can see the auto generated DOM rect object showing me x, y, width and height of canvas in relation to the viewport. This is exactly what I need. Hmm, how do I write the code now? I guess to keep it clean, I can, for example, create another property called heading, representing the HTML H1 element that says welcome, and in there, we will pre calculate its correct x, y, width, and height. x will be element x minus canvas x to account for that potential space between the web page, edge of canvas, and where the element actually starts. I will also account for the potential space between canvas and the page vertically. Width and height will be just width and height of the element, it stays the same. So now, this dot heading represents the accurate measurements of the element. So I will replace all references to this dot element in the collision detection formula with this dot heading. I also need to do it in all these places. Now it works. But still, when I press D, I want the collision box to be correctly drawn over the heading, so I replace element with heading here on line 131. When I resize, it breaks. So I have to copy all this code. And I also have to put it inside custom resize method here as well. Now the collision box sticks to the text when we resize and it registers collision correctly even when I resize the canvas. Even when canvas is not full screen, when canvas is for example 800 times 500 pixels. Because we are accounting for the edges between canvas and the page. Everything still works perfect. I set width and height back to what it was before, here and here. And I make canvas full screen again, because we know it works when it's not full screen now. What if I want the particles to start falling from this range, exactly above the heading? Between heading x and its width. As usual, I have to copy this, and I have to put the same code inside the reset method. Nice! We allow particles to bounce a few times, and then they fall through. I also have to adjust Vx here on line 63. They bounce 5 times, and then they fall through the element, ignoring the collision area. I can give them horizontal speed boost again every time they bounce, making it more likely they fall off the edge. I think this looks better. I only reduce the energy to 60% here. I boost horizontal speed times 2 every time they bounce. I can also increase the number of bounces to 10. This will result in particles sometimes shooting really fast to the sides when they bounce many times, each time increasing their Vx times 2. I think it's fine. I really like what it looks like now. Since we are measuring position of elements on a web page with JavaScript, we only want JavaScript code to run when the full web page and all its elements are fully loaded. One way to do that is to wrap all this code inside a load event listener. JavaScript runs very fast. We need to make sure that the HTML element is created first and JavaScript runs after. Especially if you choose your HTML element to be something that takes a bit longer to load, like an IMG image tag, for example. I showed you how to tweak this, so feel free to run your own experiments. This is creative coding, there is no right or wrong settings. If you want, you can check out these other particle effects. I'll see you there.